I thought it was interesting, Corwin, that uh, when the, the writer writes the book of Acts, and when he introduced to us this thing called church, the first thing he does is make a promise, and then God turns around and say, wait for it. How many of you ever had God to, to make you a promise? And then he turn around and tell you to do what? Wait for it. Why promise me something if you're going to make me wait for it? I wonder, just to examine this morning, how many people do I have in here this morning that you are waiting on something that God has promised you? And God has you in a holding pattern. Can I see your hand this morning? But how many of you believe that even though he tells me to wait, how many of you believe that God is still able to deliver on his promise? Amen. I, I need you to holler back. Don't, 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 don't play with me this morning and, and say, well, we're going to be quiet so he won't get excited. I get excited all by myself. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to ask you again, how many of you believe that God is able to deliver on whatever he has promised you? Amen. And how many you believe he may not deliver when I want him to deliver? But how many you believe that God is still able to deliver? See, one of the hardest things to do in life is to wait on God. And we who are Christians understand that God has a will for our lives. But waiting on God to fulfill his will in our lives, sometimes you're just like me. You'll get impatient. And when you get impatient, that's when the devil will work on you. When you get impatient, that's when the, the devil will cause you to lose your faith and your hope. When you get impatient because God has not shown up. And you've heard me say this a million times. God does not operate on a 12-month calendar like we do. He don't operate on a 30-day calendar like we do. But God operates in his own time. And if you believe in this statement, I need you to say hallelujah. But his time is always the best time. If you believe that I need you to say hallelujah, amen. Let me ask you something else. Since you won't say amen, let me ask you something else. How many of you were waiting on God, got impatient, ran ahead of God, and when you got yourself in a mess, you turned around and said, I wish I would have waited, amen. Can I talk to you a little while, amen? Come, come on and talk back. And if your neighbor didn't raise your hand, tell your neighbor, stop lying in the church, amen. Because all of us at some time or another has ran ahead of God and got ourselves in a mess to only have to turn around and go back and start the process all over again. Waiting is hard, even as Christians, it is hard. But let me tell you something. God has a will for your life. And sometimes God has to take you through a process in order for you to be able to handle what he has will for your life. But understand that in this principle and applying that, that when we have to wait on God, then we ask ourselves the question, why does God make us wait? Why does God make me wait? Why didn't God... Give me what I wanted yesterday. Why didn't God give me that boo I've been praying for for 20 years? Why, why he didn't give me that fine woman I've been waiting for for 30 years? Why, why he didn't give me that house I wanted? Why he didn't give me that job? Why he puts me in a waiting pattern? Now, and I want to ask you another question. How many look like God, you the only one in the waiting pattern? Amen. And everybody else is being blessed on every side. And you are the only one in the waiting pattern. But let me tell you something. Why does God make us wait? One reason he makes us to wait is to redefine our spiritual hearing. And by redefining our spiritual, he um, spiritual hearing, sometimes we don't listen to God well enough. Amen. Sometimes God can speak to us. And we put words in God's mouth. Can I talk a little while? But sometimes you, God that will put you in a waiting period in order to redefine your hearing. To be able to say, this is what the Lord promised me. This is what God had told me. And sometimes God has to take us and put us through the process to redefine my hearing. So in order that I might understand what God is saying to me. I don't care what nobody say. 
that God has a way of speaking to a child of God. You can say whatever you want to. He may not talk to me like he did Moses, but God still has a way of speaking to a child of God. If you listen long enough and with the right spirit, then God will speak to you. Can I talk a little while?